שלום וברכה, הלכות יסודי התורה, פרק שמיני, ימי ארבעה 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 לא האמינו בו ישראל מפני האותות שעשה. The reason that, that I'm Israel believed in Moshe Rabbeinu was not because of the various miracles that Moshe Rabbeinu performed and that they witnessed. שמהמאמין על פי האותות יש בליבו דופי. There is always room for doubt if one believes based on what one sees in terms of, in the way of a miracle. It is possible to pull off certain things by way of a stunt, some kind of a trick, and the person cannot be sure that what they saw is, in fact, miraculous. אלא כל האותו שעשה במדבר, לפי הסורך עשה. All the various miracles that occurred in the desert were done לפי הסורך. In other words, according to the, the need, the requirement of that moment. לא להביא ראייה על הנבואה, but not to, not in order to prove the reality, the truth of Moshe Rabbeinu's prophecy. Sorech l'ashkia'at ha-Misrim, it was necessary to drown the Misrim, the Egyptians, kara et ha-yom. The sea was split with his tlilam bo, and they were drowned in it. Sorech l'amazon, we required sustenance, horid l'anu et ha-man. And, and the man was produced. They thirsted for water. He split the stone, the rock, and water came, flowed from it. Korah and his followers challenged, and uh, Ramon doesn't use the word really challenged. Kafaru is... is uh, denied the veracity of, of his shalihot, of his mission, and they were swallowed up by the earth. And so it is with all, with all the other miraculous supernatural events. What then, in fact, was the the central, essential proof of Moshe Rabbeinu's Shehoth, his mission sent, that he was sent from Moshe. Ma'amad har Sinai, the Ma'amad, the uh, event known as Ma'amad har Sinai, when the people as a whole saw certain things clearly, שעיננו ראו על אייז סו ולא זר, לשון בעצם הפסוק, which means that we saw with our own eyes, ואוזננו שמעו ולא אחר, and with our own ears, פאש והקולות והלפידים, as the Torah describes uh, in detail, and this is why the Torah describes these things in detail, that there was uh, fire and smoke and uh, unusual uh, loud noises and sounds emanating from Har Sinai, not the kind of thing that one could possibly explain as some kind of natural occurrence. Muhu nigash el ha'arafel, he, Moshe Rabbeinu, entered into the mist, and the mountain was also also uh, surrounded uh, to near, the, near the top by a mist, a cloud, and a voice was heard clearly speaking to him, and we could hear 
משה, משה, לך אמור להם כך וכך. The voice called out to Moshe, that was audible to all, of, all people, not just to Moshe. Moshe, go and tell the people such and such. וכן הוא אומר, as it states, in seven דברים, פנים בפנים דיבר אדוני מכם. Hashem spoke to you face to face. In other words, here, yeah, this pasuk is not speaking about Hashem speaking face to face to Moshe Rabbeinu, which is what we discussed earlier in uh, the previous Perak chapter. Here, the pasuk says that all of us are imachem in the plural, panim b'fanim dibar adonai imachem. When the Emrah and states further, in the same place, lo yath avotenu karat adonai tabarit hazot. Not with our forefathers, but those who came before us. Did Hashem make this brief, this covenant? But rather with, with us, because we heard and saw these things. This was the purpose of those events was to form once and for all time this covenant, to establish this fact. Uminayin har sinai levado. How do we know that this event of Ma'amad Har Sinai is the, the proof and the, the uh, essential event that proves Moshe Rabbeinu's Nevoah for, for us for all time? As it states, Behold, I shall come to you in, in the cloud. In other words, there will be a cloud, there will be other visible and audible um, phenomena. So that the people will hear this is the purpose of this Muhammad. So, so states this Basulk explicitly. So that the people will hear when I speak with you. And then they will believe in you forever. And therefore we understand from this statement. It follows that prior to this time. Their faith in Moshe, their belief in the truth of everything Moshe said and represented was not complete, even though they had seen miracles before this time. They believed, but they were not completely convinced. In Tso, this is now Halakha Dalad in the Nachon uh, Re edition. In Tso, Elo, Sheshulah Lahem, Hem Ha'idim Al Nevoatho, Shehemeth. In other words, the people, the nation to whom Moshe Rabbeinu was sent, they are the witnesses. Hem Ha'idim, they bear testimony. Al Nevoatho, Shehemeth. To the fact that Moshe Rabbeinu's Nevoah is true. And thus, having seen and heard these things, the entire people, he, he does not need to prove himself by performing any miracle. Shehen wahu ehad badavar, they were there together. Kishne idim, shara'u davar ehad biyaha, they saw the, these events together, like two witnesses who witness an event. Each one confirms the testimony of, of his colleague, that he speaks the truth. And we do not require that one witness, if two witnesses come before a Beth Din, and they are Kishirim, etc., we do not require that one prove anything about the other. 
כך משה רבנו, כל ישראל עדים לו, אחר מעמד הר סיני, from the time of מעמד הר סיני, all of our Israel are witnesses, and can, can testify. הוא אינו צריך לעשות להם אותה, he does not need to produce any other proof by way of miracle. הלכה ה' או still continuation of Beth in other editions וזהו שאמר לו הקודש ברוך הוא בתחילת נבואתו and this is what was said by Hashem at the beginning of Moshe's prophetic career to Moshe בעת שנתן לו האותות לעשותן במצרים when he instructed Moshe to perform certain miracles in Egypt, the, the snake, the rod turning into a snake, and the hand becoming leprous, when you perform these miracles in front of them, they will listen to you, they will accept you. Because without that, they would not have believed at all. Anyone can come along and, and make all manner of claims. So he had to, to prove something. And these were the, the purpose of these authors, of these miraculous events, of these acts, super, supernatural acts, was to, to grab their attention. Nevertheless, Rambam says, Yada Moshe Rabbeinu. Because Moshe Rabbeinu knew Shehamamina pi haothot yesh beribo dofi, and this is also why Moshe Rabbeinu was reluctant to go. He knew that it would not be a simple matter to convince them. Yesh beribo dofi umu harher umu hashev person he doubt, and this is what he expected. Vohaya nishmat milalech, and he was trying to avoid going. And he said explicitly, However, I know they will not believe me if you, if you send me. And I, I say, I was sent by Hashem, the God of your forefathers. And I was instructed to tell you A, B, and C. I know they will not believe me. At that point, Moshe, uh, Hashem said to Moshe, he said to Moshe, I'm giving you these authors, these um, miracles to perform, but this is only a stopgap measure, a temporary measure, until they leave Mithraim. When they arrive at this place again, at this mountain, at that time, their doubts will be dispelled. Because here I will perform miracles, events, they will see and witness things. She had their own, they will know for a fact. They will know that it was I who sent you from the outset and that, that everything you said was true. And they will have no doubt left in their mind. And this is what is stated in the Pasuk. And this will be a proof. That I, in fact, have sent you. In other words, all the other things that will be, you will perform before their eyes will not be sufficient, will not be complete. The thing that will prove once and for all will be the following. When you take them from Misraim and you come back to this place, to this mountain, you shall commune and worship Hashem on this mountain, this at this spot. So, 
what we have said is as follows. Shekol Navi, Sheyamod Ahad Moshe Rabbeinu. Any prophet in Am Yisrael who arises after the time of Moshe Rabbeinu, En Anu Ma'aminim Bo Mipanei Ha'orf Levado. It is not because of some miracle that he performs that we believe in him. Not for that reason alone. Kadesh Lomar Im Ya'ase Orf Nishma' Lo Bechol Mashi Yomar. In other words, it is not the case that we will say with regards to such a prophet, well, if he performs a miracle, we will uh, accept what he says. And if not, well, then we won't. We are commanded in the Torah to listen to a prophet, to follow and accept what the prophet says. This is why we take note of, of these people. وَأَمَارْ إِمْنَفَنْ أَوْهُ إِلَوْ تِشْمَعُونَ And Hashem said, if he performs uh, if he is able to, as we said earlier, to predict events, future events correctly. That is, that is an oath. That is also an a um, Proof. Uh, then, allow tishma'un. You are required to listen to him, follow him. Just as we are commanded by the Torah to accept the testimony of two edim kasherim, and I stress again the word kasherim according to the Torah. A person who comes along and says something without having a hezkat kasherut without having the essential status of uh, Israel kosher, such testimony is, is worthless. In fact, often worse than worthless. And from this you'll understand that uh, the proceedings of courts in most places on most issues are of no, of, of no import at all. And then, of course, a court proceeding is reduced to a kind of a game where the, the, the um, more adept, often also the more conniving and the more devious the lawyer, uh, and the more uh, impressionable if you if we're talking about the jury system the jury uh, or in other countries such as israel for example there are no juries uh, but the judges are absolutely convinced that they can tell who's lying who is not <clears throat> even even when the person in question is a hardened criminal and known to be such and has uh, agreed to testify to save his own skin. Nevertheless, obviously what he says must be accepted, and uh, we will throw people in jail or confiscate their property or what have you, because this um, public enemy who has proved multiple times that he is anything but a man of truth, because he said something. A very, very dubious system of, of uh, so-called justice. So that's why the uh, anything stated here by the Rambam, as as we know throughout uh, the Torah, with reference to Eidim, speaks about Eidim Kashirim. If such such people come before us too, and they testify to the same thing, we are commanded. To listen to them to accept what they say. Even though we do not, in fact, know, we cannot know for a certainty whether they speak the truth or whether they lie. In the same way, we are told and commanded to accept this individual, this Navi, who has demonstrated. Uh, and also because we have reason to believe that such a person 
could be an avi based on what we know about him. And then he also predicts events successfully. We are commanded to, to trust and follow such a person. Even though we do not know for a fact and cannot prove if this um, proof that he provides is in fact authentic. Therefore, al or Gimel in other editions, the Fichach, Im Amad Novi, or Asa of Thothumofatin Gedolim. If a prophet arises and performs miracles, even very uh, impressive miracles, Ulkesh Nahish Novo Thoshala Moshala Benu, and then claims that he was sent by Hashem and he has a new Torah, a new uh, set of instructions from Hashem, which supersede that which was said to us by Moshe Rabbeinu. En shoma'im lo, we pay no heed to such a person. Wa'anu yodha'im bi-yahud, and we know for a fact, shatan ha'othoth belat v'chishufen, and we can be certain that any apparent uh, miraculous uh, ability that he demonstrated is some kind of trick. The fish of Atmo Sharabeno, Ena Alpiha Otho Kadesh in Arocho Ze no Otho Ze. Because our belief and trust in Mosharabeno is not based on miracles of the kind that another person might perform or seemingly perform. Rather, it is based on, as we said, on Ma'amad Har Sinai, which is uh, an event or set of events that cannot be replicated, that established Moshe Rabbeinu as a Navi MF for all time. And therefore, we do not compare the uh, miracles performed by one to those performed by another. We saw and witnessed Vosnenu Shema'nuha and heard these things, Kamosh Shamahu, as Moshe himself heard and saw these things on Er Sinai. And therefore we do not cannot question the name of Moshe Rabban. It's what is this similar Edim Shaidul Adam Al Dabar Shira Abaino Shaino Kamushira. This is like the case where two people testify to a person and tell him, something that he saw with his own eyes, that it never took place, that what he saw is not true. The person knows that what he saw is true. Even if these two people are apparently kasherim, even even if they are such people, he's not going to accept unless he's weak-minded or unless he's uh, watched uh, perhaps too much of the news that uh, that what he knows to be true, what he is is clear to him, is somehow not true. In the same way, he doesn't have to listen to these two people, even though generally we do accept the testimony of two Edim. Where a person knows something to be himself, he's not required a doth. So we are Yisrael are, are such a, like this person. We are such a person who has seen and witnessed something and knows what he saw. And therefore he knows that they are lying and does not accept anything that they say. The Fichach, Amachazain, Amarat Torah, the Torah states, Shein Baha Otham of Faith. If the the predicted future event transpires, if he is a false navi, a navi shakar, if he uh, leads us away from the Torah, 
Because whatever it is that he's proving now is co contradicts what you yourself saw and know to be true. And seeing that we do not believe in the Torah, we do not believe in Moshe Rabbeinu because of a miracle. But because of the fact that Moshe Rabbeinu commands us and instructs us, having established his credentials, how can we accept uh, any claim to the opposite effect, which contradicts that, that which we saw and heard ourselves? That is the end of Parak Shemini. And we continue now. Parak Tishi'i, the ninth Parak, which discusses the the eternal nature of the Torah and, uh, and the authority of the Navi to uh, instruct us what to do right now at this point in time even if, even if it contradicts what the Torah states in other words there are such situations despite what we have just said and that, that is what is discussed now presently it is clear and explicit in the Torah that this miswa of the this Torah is for all time. And la It is is not to be and cannot be modified, adjusted. It cannot be detracted from or added to. All that I have commanded you, that you must observe and keep. Do not detract or add to it. Do not add or do not detract from it. It states also further, also in Sefer Devari, the, the, pasuk, the beginning of that pasuk speaks about the fact that there are things that are known only to Hashem, that we do not know, cannot know, and we do not need to know necessarily. But that which we do know, that which is in the Torah, which is clear and comprehensible, which has been revealed to us, for us and our descendants, for all time. To walk in the, in the way of the Torah, to follow the Torah. And thus, we see, we know, to the Torah is for all time. And cannot be replaced, and does not have a, a, a best by date. It states many times in the Torah that this is a hukat olam, an eternal uh, law statute for all your generations. When Emar Alova Shemaim, it also says this Torah is not Bashamayim. <clears throat> Meaning to say that the Torah has been given to you and explained to you, and you have received it from Moshe Rabbeinu, from other Nevi'im, from uh, those who came before you who were steeped in the Torah. And from all of this, you understand that a Navi cannot come along and introduce a new Torah, or even a new uh, concept in the Torah. This expression, She'en Navi, Rashayin Hadesh Dava Me'ata, appears in, in Hazar in a few places. 
<coughs> even with regards to Niswa, like Kariyat Mechila, Puri, this point is stressed by, by the Hachomim, that such additions, such brand new Niswaf, which have no obvious source in the Torah, which cannot be extrapolated from the Torah in an obvious way. These are Hidushim, and they, and they require special uh, special uh, basis, and uh, it is unusual for such for such such an addition to be to become part of the Torah. <coughs> Therefore, thus, if a, a person comes along, Ben Israel, Ben Min whether from Am Israel or from another nation, and even performs miracles, and claims that Hashem sent him to add or detract from the Torah. Or to add a miswa, to detract from miswa, or to forish from miswa, mina miswa, perush, shelo shamanu mi moshe, or to interpret a miswa in a certain way, which differs from that which we have received, not what we heard from Moshe and all of those who followed in the in the footsteps of Moshe Rabbeinu, or she amar she othan a miswa she nistavu b'hem Yisrael. Or this person claims that the Torah is true or was true, and all those miswot were from Hashem. But they are not for all time. They were limited to a certain period. And now these miswot no longer apply. This person, I'm sorry. Uh, anyone making such a claim? But rather they were time limited. They were time sensitive. And they no longer apply. Any such claim. Such a person is an avishakar, is what is referred to in the Torah. As an Avi Shekhar, a false prophet. By definition, this person is contradicting the Torah and the Nevoah of Moshe Rabbeinu. And such a person is to be executed by strangulation. For daring to speak in the name of Hashem that which he was not instructed to, to speak. Shahu Baruch Shemo Siwala Moshe Shal Miswa Hazot because he Hashem Baruch Shemo, may his name be blessed, he instructed and said to Moshe that this Miswa, this Torah, Lanu Ulavanenu Ad Olam is for us and for our descendants for all time. Ulo Ish El we Hazev, and Hashem does not change his mind. One understands, of course, that in saying these things, uh, Rambam here is is explaining why we do not accept claims made by Yeshua and Lusrish and Lushayir Kav, by Jesus, or uh, various claims that he made and his followers that the Torah is, uh, is has been replaced, and also that Am Yisrael has been replaced, replacement theology, because this, by definition, contradicts the Torah. It is true, by the way, that uh, with regards to what precisely Yeshua no three. Uh, Himself actually thought about these things. We cannot be we cannot be certain, because all the uh, texts 
of the of the church, the various churches, uh, all their writings were edited, redacted, and uh, made to fit a certain line, a certain position. From what we know, there were Jewish followers of uh, Yeshua Hanusri who believed in him as a Messiah figure, but continued to, to keep all the Torah and, and all the Miswot. And there were many such people, and this is also hinted at uh, in the Mishnah, where it talks about um, Masech al Mughira, for example, where it talks about uh, a person behaving in a certain way, which hints at least and re reveals to us the fact that he is Amin. Amin was one of the early Jewish Christians. But uh, if, he's, if he's coming to the Beth Knesset, he's wearing tefillin, and he's joining your tefillah, apparently he's, he's one of us, he's, one of the, he's a Jew. Uh, and he looks like other Jews. And uh, generally, that is true. But he also apparently has other beliefs which, which undermine the Torah. And which are pernicious, and 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 uh, we have to be aware and on our, on our guard for such things. Uh, so, if uh, Mishnah says in the real life, a person uh, is willing to pray only when barefoot, well, that was a practice uh, at that time that was uh, associated with these minim. At any rate, it seems that. The, the, the Jewish followers of Yeshua Nasri, Shem Roshayim Yudakov, were not uh, all, or perhaps not any of them, really, uh, of this opinion that the Torah is no longer relevant. But uh, in order to in order to sell this new product to a wider audience. And this was the, the great talent of the original Jewish salesman, Shaul of Tarshish, also known as Paul. Um, he had to essentially do away with the miswot. So what the historical reality was at different points in, in time, I think we cannot be certain about. But we do know that as, as Christianity developed, it was... Um, it was based on this essential claim that the, the Miswat of the Torah no longer apply. And the same, of course, is true of Islam. Uh, Muhammad was also, uh, also claimed that uh, his, his book replaced all that came before. So when Rambam writes these things, he's referring to these, these other religions which branched off each in their own way in their own time from from the Torah from Judaism is the belief that a deceased individual can be a messiah figure itself a problematic belief I'm sorry is is the belief that a deceased individual can be some sort of messianic figure is that in itself a problematic belief it is a very problematic belief. I know. I know that uh, there are those who claim, based on the statements in the Masechet Sanhedrin and the Bavli, referring, uh, stating that uh, mentioning certain personalities, some from the um, from amongst the living and some from the dead, uh, that the Mashiach. Uh, should be understood or compared to such a person. And this, some people interpret to mean that uh, the particular individual mentioned uh, is, we expect him to be uh, revived, reappear and become the Mashiach or something like that. This is simply a, mis a misunderstanding and a mis misguided and childish understanding what the Gemara says over there, what the Talmud states there is that if you are 
trying to get a, an image, form an image in your mind of the kind of individual, the kind of personality that one should or could expect the Mashiach to be like. What kinds, what kinds of uh, attributes and uh, traits would this person exhibit? The Torah give, the Talmud there gives some examples of outstanding individuals that various people, because that they were familiar with these with these people, um, imagine that they that the Melech HaMashiach might be such a person, so similar to that person. There are, of course, people who say, well, 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 wait a moment, we know this, isn't it? It's elsewhere in the Talmud, Yaakov Avinu Lometh. Yaakov Avinu uh, did not die. Well, again, this is a childish and totally spurious understanding of what is said over there. In, in real world terms, Yaakov Avinu passed away and left this world, and so did Moshe Rabbeinu, and uh, so did everybody else. Uh, that we, of whom we know, with the, with the exception perhaps of Eliyahu Navi, which is a mysterious parasha, um, who enters this world in a mysterious way and leaves it in an even more mysterious way. When he appears for the first time, Eliyahu is, we don't hear of his tribe, we do not hear who his father was, which is unusual. And he leaves this world in a manner which is unprecedented. So it seems he was not a uh, not a human being, perhaps in the usual sense, or at least not uh, not not something we 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 see before anywhere else in the in the, in the Tanakh. Perhaps some kind of a malach, an angel that uh, was sent to earth to do certain things and then to disappear once again. But This was once said to me, I recall, by uh, by a certain person who was uh, originally a Christian pastor, and he converted to to the Torah, to Judaism, and he was a sincere person. But this belief that the uh, Mashiach in the future would be a resurrected David Melech Mamash, the same David Melech would reappear, and he quoted Pesukim at me speaking about David the Melech, and I kept telling him, he was talking about uh, the concept of Malchut Beth David re, uh, re-entering history, but not about that particular individual. He was unwilling to accept this, uh, which is some kind of baggage that he was un- un- unable to relinquish uh, along the way. And uh, there are Jews today who who were born Jews, who uh, hold similar views with regards to certain individuals. This is all untrue and very problematic, very problematic. Why does it state in the Torah, I shall raise up a Navi from amongst the brethren, from within the Jewish people, such similar to you, like you, Moshe, Kamocha. When I will place my instruction in, literally in his mouth, I will tell him what to say, what to speak to them. Why does it say this? If we just said a moment ago, that uh, a Navi cannot change anything in the Torah. So what is the purpose of a Navi? It is not to invent a new religion or system that a Navi comes to the Jewish people. That is not part of his job description at all. The purpose, the overall general mission of all the Nevi'im is to remind the Jewish people of the Torah to which they are committed, which they were commanded to follow and live by, to remind them, to uh, warn them, 
that if they do not do so, they should not uh, transgress this Torah. And if they do, what the results, what the ramifications will be. As the last of the Nevi'im Malachi states, Zichru Torah Moshe Avdi. This is how he ends his Nevo'ah. The end of the Tanakh takes us all the way back to the beginning, or almost the beginning. To Moshe Rabbeinu, Zichru Torah Moshe Avdi. This is the purpose of all the Nevi'im and all their statements and all their enactments. And essentially, all their, all, all their teachings, which are the basis of the Torah Shabbat Peh, are to uh, firmly establish the Torah for all time within Am Israel uh, in such a way that it will not be forgotten, that it will not fall into disuse or uh, will not be uh, somehow um, overlooked or, or forgotten or changed in some way, but rather to to uh, create a system that that um, establishes and fixes the Torah uh, within the Jewish people as as the essential cultural ideological ori orientation for all time. That is the purpose of, of a Navi, not to perform a miracle and not to uh, invent a new Torah, but to maintain and strengthen uh, and guarantee the continued existence of the Torah within Am Yisrael. We shall stop here for today. It's cool. We are Mesle Vavchem. Call him a Yahalim Shalom. Thank you, Rabbi Bar Chaim. We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends and send in your responses. We would also like to suggest the following opportunity to our viewers. If you identify with Rabbi Bar Chaim's message and would like to sponsor or dedicate a video interview with the rabbi in honor or memory of a loved one, if you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Israel or invite the rabbi for a speaking engagement, please email us at office at machonchilo.org.